Hello everyone. In this lecture, I'm going to discuss a new proposed method by me and my colleagues. So we published this paper about cross-country comparison of operand resources in logistics outsourcing relationships. Here we proposed a new method called CABA, Comparative Importance Improvement Analysis. So we can consider importance as A and improvement as B. So where we are and where we want to go. So then we call the whole method comparative importance improvement analysis as CABA method. So as you can see here, we mentioned this. But so while we were working on this, we our motivation was initially the importance performance method. And then from there, first we proposed a importance improvement analysis, which we can call AB analysis. And then we propose the comparative uh, AB analysis, the CABA analysis, okay? So we have to first understand the difference between these three, okay? So we have the importance performance analysis, which has been out there for two, three decades. And then based on that, we developed a importance improvement analysis, which can be considered as a standalone method and can be applied uh, in many studies in the future. And then we developed the AB analysis further and we developed to CABA analysis. So let us first quickly have a look into the improvement performance. So in this study, our main focus was on operant resources. You can read the study and you can understand the concept of operant resources. But basically here we were dealing with a number of operant resources. So here we have the list of them. So here you can find the list of them. And we basically wanted to see how the manufacturers and how the logistic service providers view these uh, operant resources, okay? But now, as I mentioned, we were looking into the Im Im importance performance matrix, right? So which was initially introduced in an earlier study, Martila and Gems, 1997. So let's have a look into their study, Martila and Gems. So basically here, the one of the motivation for this method was that, you know, often in managerial practice, when we talk about this regression and t-test and all these things, uh, in managerial practice, sometimes it's hard for people to really follow the results, to understand the coefficients and to really make sense of it based on p-values and so on. They proposed an approach where we basically ask respondents two questions, okay? How important is the feature and how well the feature performs? So importance is the imp importance and how well it performs is the performance. So here they were looking into a case of automotive dealer, okay? And so then they had a number of questions. Here you see 14 questions and they were asking the, the respondents, the users of, of the services about these 14 questions. How important is it and how it performed? Okay, so here you can see the mean score. So just taking the average of all the responses and taking the mean score here, you can see the mean scores are here, right? And we can clearly see there are some mean differences. Like here, 3.83 is the importance and 2.63 is the performance rating, okay? So some cases there are bigger differences, some cases there are smaller differences, right? Like in this case, for example, for the number 12, convenient to work, here we see the mean importance is 2.43 and the performance rating is a bit higher, 2.49. We could run a t-test uh, and actually these are taken from the same person. So because when we take from the same people two the ratings, so we could actually just do the paired sample t-test, okay? Because we are collecting uh, same responses, say from same people, multiple responses. So to compare the mean differences, we could just pick, we could just pick the paired sample t-test. So here, uh, let's say when we look into these, we are looking for differences, one one variable, two conditions, and we are normally saying they're repeated measures. So if the variables are normally distributed, we use related t-test or uh, related t-test or independent sample t-test. If the variables were not normally distributed, we go for Wilkinson test. But for simplicity, think about this, that we could have run a t-test, okay? But then the main idea of this method is that not to run the t-test actually, and try to make some overall general sense uh, without running the p-values and all these things. So here, what we could do, we could actually just plot them in, in a matrix, matrix structure like this, as you can see, right? So we could just plot them here in a figure like this. So here, what we did, we developed a matrix. So we put the importance in the y-axis, and we put the performance in the x-axis, okay? So that's what we are doing. So basically in the x-axis, we put the performance on the y-axis, we put the importance. And 
we are saying that when our importance, let's say here, we say low and here it's high. And then here it will be again low and here it will be high. So you see excellent and fair and here uh, excellent and uh, slightly important. So here, let's say if we first focus uh, in one of the quadrants. So we have here multiple quadrants. We can call them Q1. We can call them Q2, Q3 quadrant. So we are just calling them different quadrants, Q4. So in the first quadrant, when the values are low important, so when the values are low important, no. When, when the values are highly important, okay? So when the values are highly important and low performance. So high on importance, okay? And low on performance. High is importance here and low is performance here. So then we are saying concentrate here. If you think about it, these are highly important and performance is low. So we need to concentrate there. Then let's think about this one here. Here we have low importance and low performance. Both of them are low, okay? Importance is also low and performance is also low. Okay, both of them are low. So basically, no priority here. Now think about this one here. On the vertical axis, it's high. Okay, for importance, it's high. And then for performance, it's also high. So both of them are high, high. It means keep up the good work. Importance is high, performance is high. We keep working as we are doing. Okay, if we look here, here, importance is low. So I'm always the first letter, I'm always referring to the importance. And the second one, I'm referring to the performance. And here, the performance is. Yeah, so here I, I did a mistake. It should be low. Importance is low and performance is high. So basically here, we are saying that these factors are not really so much important, but the performance we are doing great. But then if it's not so important, then we should not really put so much effort on the performance, right? So we are possibly overkilling it. So that's what the importance performance matrix really means. And now if we try to relate it, so let's say number 14. So number 14 here, if you look into the scores, the importance score is very low for sending out maintenance notices. Importance score is very low, 2.05. But here the performance is high. So uh, it's higher than the, the average score of this. So that's why we are saying it's a possible overkill. Now let's pick maybe another one. Let's, let's look at number two, which is in concentrate here. So number two is here, first action on compliments, uh, complaints. So importance is 3.63 and performance is 2.73. So basically here it's high importance and the performance is low. So that's why it's here. We should focus here. Keep up the good work. Let's pick number six, courteous and friendly service. 3.41 is importance. So importance is high and performance is comparatively low. So that's why uh, performance is also high actually. Yeah, both of them are high, high here. Okay, it depends on how we set the cross here here. As it looks, uh, both of them are high. So that means we are doing good. And let's say if we pick one from here, number 11, convenient to home. So if, if it's convenient to home, it's really not so important. And also uh, the performance is low. So in both cases, it's low priority anyway. So I hope now you understand the concept of importance performance because the whole method of Kaba builds on this. We build on this. So instead of performance, we use improvement. Okay, We, we want to show the improvement need in Kaba. And then we also develop a method of doing a comparative analysis, okay? So in this case, we are asking that only the respondents of the dealer about the importance and the performance of the different attributes. But in Kaba, we can ask the dealers and also their users, so both of them. So the same questions, we ask both of them. And it is supposed to provide better uh, quality results with more reliability and really will be helping you to find out the gaps. Okay, so again, uh, we will follow with some more videos, but here is our paper. So feel free to go and download this paper and then we will uh, follow up more for more lectures, videos with uh, hands-on tutorials about the method and how it works and how to do the calculations and so on. So good luck, cheers.